If you're someone that likes to design their WordPress pages from scratch, you need to understand how to create the skeleton of your page. And this process of building the backbone of your WordPress pages, I like to call wireframing. Let's jump in. Regardless of the two different ways in which I wireframe my website on WordPress, which I'll talk about in a second, they both involve using Thrive Architect as my page builder. There's a link in the description box down below for you to grab a license in case you haven't done so already. Now, wireframing a page is a design concept that I learned from Gregory John, who taught me how to design web applications. And it truly changed the way in which I designed not just my applications, but my WordPress pages too. Whether I'm building pages on WordPress or designing software, before I get into the nitty gritty of design and development, I make sure I wireframe my pages first as this sets them up to be fully responsive. And it also gives me a chance to get a clear picture of how my page is going to end up looking like. There are two different ways in which we can do this. The first one is simply creating the sections that I need by inserting background sections, content boxes, columns, placeholder text, and then we go in and populate everything with our real design elements. Let's just do this really quick so that you can get a better picture of what wireframing looks like. Great, so let's quickly wireframe apple.com using Thrive Arctic, right? Let's just assume that we're trying to build out Apple's current homepage. Let's see how we would go through the process of wire wireframing this page from scratch using Thrive Architect. First things first, let's just create a new page inside WordPress. Let's just call this Apple wireframe and let's fire up Thrive Architect. And we shall start from a completely blank page. Now let's just quickly count how many sections we're going to need to replicate this homepage. We have our top hero section, so that's one section. Then we have a second section, third section, we have a fourth section here with this two column layout, which is duplicated twice. So that would be six sections total and an image gallery at the bottom. So that's seven sections in total that we need, seven different background sections that we're going to have to place inside Thrive Architect. And let's just quickly inspect the page so that we can see how tall each section is. So we can see that it's about 700 pixels tall, right? Uh, 692 pixels tall to be exact. So let's jump right back into Thrive Architect and let's just start dropping in some background sections. We're gonna need one for our hero section and let's just make this 700 pixels tall for now. Whoop, 700, perfect. And we can duplicate this two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So if I didn't click too many times, we should have about seven sections. We can always delete some if we have to. And now um, let's see what we need to do in order to start creating the, the actual skeleton of our page. So our top hero section is essentially going to consist of some text, two buttons and an image. Pretty simple. Let's just give this a background color. Let's make it black. And let's center things vertically speaking. Let's insert a content box, center things vertically speaking. We should insert an H1 text. Since we're replicating Apple, our font style is going to be of type enter. And this would probably have to be a, an H2 actually. Let's make it H2, possibly even H1 in fact, since it's the main opening of our main homepage. And again, let's pick out enter to be our font. Let's make it white and we could play with the font size here, right? So this would be 52 pixels. We can probably make this negative one pixel, negative two, sounds about right. And we need a subheading. Let's make this 32 and we need a two column layout for our main buttons. Let's actually put the two columns inside a content box. Perfect. And let's give our content box a max width. Center it. And we can start dragging in some buttons into each column. Great. And we're gonna drag another button here. Perfect. Let's get rid of some margins and paddings. 
Oop. And our buttons need to be completely invisible. We don't need a background color. It probably would have been faster to just, yeah, just delete that button, clone this one, bring it here. <clears throat> Perfect. And we can just make this blue, make this blue as well. And now it's gonna be easier for us to just duplicate these things and move them around into the new uh, background sections below that we need to customize in a second. Let's just continue to get rid of some margins and paddings here. Excellent. Probably have some more here. Great. And some more here. <clears throat> Great, so this already gets me the backbone of my hero section, right? I already have most of the necessary elements in there, which is a heading, a subheading, and my main two call to actions. I am missing an image. Now, since we're trying to wireframe the page, we're gonna have to be collecting images and you know some of those design elements later on. I'm not gonna worry too much about those. We will include an image in this first uh, hero section. Um, so let's just go ahead and put it in the background of the, of the section itself. Let's pick out our image, borrowed it from Apple, and boom, there it is. Now, it's coming into conflict with our current uh, content box. I'm thinking that we could just uh, make this content box be, let's come into layout and position. Let's go into advanced. Let's make it a little bit, put it further up. There you go. And that looks somewhat like what Apple has going on, right? We could change this to be iPhone 14th and so forth and so on. But again, we're just trying to wireframe the page. We're not trying to build it out entirely as it is. This gets us the, the backbone of our hero section. And technically speaking, here's the thing, we created a bunch of sections, uh, but it would make our lives a whole lot easier to just duplicate this entire background section. And instead of making it black, let's just change the background color. And here we know that we need to put our um, second um, section, right? We can just come in here, change the font style, make it black, make the subheading black. And we would already be close to having a second section right there, just by duplicating a few things. And we would do the same thing for this third section. Instead of making it white, this would have to be a little bit gray on the grayish side. Let's come into background style and let's give it this grayish tone, perfect. So we have the backbone of section one, section two, section three. Now we get to a two column layout. So for our two column layout, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, instead of adding in a content box, we're just gonna drag in our columns because we're gonna want our columns to stretch out to almost the max width of the screen. So let's go ahead and drag in a two column layout here. Let's tell our background section, hey, do not inherit the width from our landing page and let those columns stretch out to the full width. But I don't want them to stretch out entirely, right? I want these Y borders around the columns. So we could technically just come into the background section and say, hey, make sure that you, get, that you have a 20 pixel left padding and a 20 pixel right padding so that my columns don't stretch out entirely to the full width of the screen. Um, and now we just need to populate in with some images and some text. Now let's just quickly measure how tall these uh, columns are. It's gonna make our life a little bit easier because we know, okay, they're about 636 pixels tall, which means that we can come into Thrive Architect and tell uh, Thrive Architect, hey, make sure that you make these columns at least 636 pixels tall. Okay, and now I can just come into the background style for this left-hand column, make it this grayish style, do the same for the right-hand column, which is it's just gonna be black. Perfect, and we can probably just do, 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 do. Yeah, 
let's do something real quick. We can probably just duplicate this content box, bring this further down into our, and we just stick it in there. Let's make sure that we deactivate the advanced settings that we assigned it at the very top. Let's get rid of all this vertical height and we can do the same thing, but let's just use the white heading here, duplicate this, and let's bring this down into our right-hand column. Mm, let's get rid of this vertical height, perfect, and boom. That gets me my first set of two column uh, of two column uh, rows that we need. We need three of these, but uh, the only thing that, we, that we're really missing is a, an image underneath, right? And for the sake of just putting something so that you can see what it looks like, let's just drag in the same image that we put at the very top. Not gonna look entirely as good. And we can just duplicate these. Whoop, columns. Let's just clone them and let's clone them. And that gets me three rows of two column layouts that I'm gonna need to complete this section. And then we're just missing an image gallery, right? We can just drop in an image gallery and it is going to be of type, let's just pick out some of these for now. Perfect, no caption needed. And let's just make sure that we come into our carousel options and make it, let's do one column and overlap end items, main options, image height needs to be taller. That's about it. And this would be kind of what we're going after when we're talking about wireframing a page from scratch. Now, since we are WordPress users and we have access to amazing tools like Thrive Architect, there's an even faster way of wireframing your site. You see, even if you have a unique design that you're going after, you know, a, a design in Figma that a designer has crafted up for you, it may still be worth wireframing your pages, and even your theme using Thrive Architect and Thrive Theme Builder templates. Here's the thing. There's hundreds of different content block templates that you can put on your Thrive Architect powered pages in just a couple of clicks. And of course, these blocks already come with placeholder images and text. And so it just makes sense to look for templates that somewhat resemble the design that we're going after, drop them into our page and see how they look and how they behave when it comes to responsiveness. And you know, if we're not happy with something, we can always just make as many changes as we'd like to these templates using Thrive Architect. Let's just quickly do this so that you can see what I mean. Now see, here's one of the beauties behind Thrive Architect and Thrive Theme Builder, whether you're customizing your page as we're going to do now, or you're customizing wireframing your theme, um, you can just start working off of templates. It's just gonna save our, our, ourselves some a whole lot of time, right? So let's just go back to our Apple example. Let's just look for a, a top hero section that kind of resembles what we're going after. That way we don't actually need to spend a whole lot of time ourselves inserting background sections and so forth and so on. So we're looking for a hero section that has two call to actions, an image and um, and an H1 heading, that's about it. So let's just look at all of these and see which one kind of has what we're going after. I'm thinking that it could just be this one, this top one, because the only thing that we would have to do is insert an image as a background. Let's try that out and see if that works. So we have our background section. We would just have to come into our background style, make it black, change the font to be white and make it enter. You know, we don't have to customize all these things right now, but just that so you can see how easy it is to just get the, the backbone of what we're going after, just relying off of templates and so forth and so on. Whoops, I gave it, I need to come into the block settings and actually insert an image. Boom. And that's how easy it is. And we can just move these things up as we did earlier, put them inside a content box. Perfect, put the text inside a content box. Uh, 
iPhone 14 Pro. Just want to give you a better crystal clear idea of what this would look like. Enter. Perfect. Again, we can probably just make this T2, negative 2, and so forth and so on. Let's make this 32. Put the button inside the content box and we can just bring the content box further up using our relative height. Whoop. There you go. And just duplicate this call to action. Put it on the other hand. Remember columns need to be inside a content box so that we can give them a max width. Content box, max width. And let's just center everything. And that's about it. I mean, give or take, you can kind of see how easy it is. It's much easier to just start off working off of a template, right? Let's just do one more so you can see what I meant. Uh, let's try to do one of these two column layouts. Let's look for some content, insert a block, and let's find a template that somewhat resembles what we're going after. Great, so inside product highlight, there is this um, content block that functionality speaking is not going to get us where we want because here we actually have an image gallery on the left-hand column and some text on the right-hand column. I have to say, I kind of really like this two column layout, probably even more than what Apple has going on here. The problem is that Apple is using, in terms of structure, their, you know, their structure is so simple and so basic. I mean, this is just a background section, some text, some buttons, an image, again, some text, some buttons, an image, again, some text, some buttons, an image. It is so, so simple, so, basic that it's, it, you know, it's, it's very easy for us to just do it by hand. Um, the two column layout, again, we did it earlier, right? You can just drop in a two column layout and drop in some text, buttons, image, you're good to go. When you want to get a little bit more fancy like this, where you have four images in one um, column and then a, a little bit of companion text on the, on the opposing column, uh, you can see how easy it is to just do that with a Thrive content block. I guess it's just a matter of, uh, you know, playing it out and see which sections it's better to just do from scratch and which sections it's better to do um, starting off of a template. Because I can see that I, I didn't quite find a content block that's as simple as just having some, some uh, text and image inside a two column layout. If we jump over into content blocks, um, there are some that try to kind of gimmick what Apple is doing, but again, it, it's not quite what we're going after, right? And it's obviously not gonna be exactly the same, but hopefully it kind of just gives you a bigger picture overview of how easy it is to, you know, get some placeholder text and some placeholder images right in there without having to type it all out ourselves and do the, you know, create the backbone from scratch ourselves. There you go. Why don't you tell me which two methods are you currently using to wireframe your pages? Do you like to design everything from scratch yourself or would you rather start off from a pre-designed content block to save you some time? I am down in the comment section below ready to chit chat with you all. And don't forget that you can grab a license for Thrive Architect at the best possible price by clicking the link in the description box below. I truly appreciate your time and I'll see you soon. Thank you, bye.